Hi everybody, so today I thought I'd make a video demonstrating how I'm currently using Vienna Ensemble Pro 7 in 2022. I made a video almost a year ago demonstrating how I set VE Pro up in Cubase, and for the most part I think that video is still up to date. But I've made a few changes in how I do things, and just in my overall strategy when using orchestral samples. Because some of the changes involve a slight adjustment in how I route things, I'll spend the first portion of this video reviewing how I set things up in VE Pro 7 and Cubase 12. First, I want to look at how I set things up last year. The basic idea was that I could make a Cubase template with all of the necessary MIDI tracks, each one connected to the appropriate MIDI port and channel within the correct instance of VE Pro. All of my samples were loaded into several instances of VE Pro, and their outputs were routed to instrumental buses in Cubase. Then within Cubase, I did all of my mixing and audio routing into a mix bus. This worked fine, but what I realized is that as I learned more about mixing, I was constantly updating my Cubase template, especially in terms of mixing plugins and how I treat the sound. So because I was constantly updating my template, it didn't really make sense to save a master Cubase template. Instead, I would load up the Cubase project for the last thing that I worked on with my latest mixing settings. I would save it as a new project and delete all of the MIDI data to have a fresh project to work from. As you might suspect, this wasn't ideal, and often I'd be trying to figure out which Cubase project had the most recent setup. Needless to say, I decided to experiment with some changes. So now I start with a template in Cubase that has all of the MIDI tracks set up in folders with expression maps and everything. It wouldn't have to be Cubase though, it could be any DAW really. So then I have the MIDI tracks routed to a rack instrument instance of VE Pro. I usually have woodwinds going to one instance, brass to another, strings to another, and so on. The next thing I do is to have all of the instruments sent to their respective instrument bus that I've created in VE Pro. So these are separate auxiliary audio buses within VE Pro. One for flutes, one for oboes, one for first violins, and so on. From there, I can do a lot of my mixing. I'll add EQ plugins, compression if I'm using it. I can adjust volume of individual instruments, all within VE Pro. I can also set up a few reverb sends and returns, and then have the individual instrument buses routed to the appropriate audio outputs of VE Pro. Each of these VE Pro outputs have been activated in the appropriate rack instrument within Cubase. Now I have an audio channel in Cubase that's already been mixed how I like it for every orchestral instrument or string section. I then route all of the woodwinds to a woodwinds bus, brass to a brass bus, and so on. If I need to add EQ or bus compression or some other plugin to an individual section bus, I can do that in Cubase. So I haven't completely eliminated the use of plugins within Cubase, but I found a really comfortable balance that works for me. So I'll demonstrate this process now with an empty instance of both Cubase 12 and VE Pro 7. The first thing I want to do is to create a new instance of VE Pro by clicking this plus button here. For the sake of the demonstration, I'll create this instance for the Berlin Woodwinds. I'll go ahead and delete this default master bus. So I'll use the sign version of Berlin Winds, which like the contact version is multi-timbral, meaning I can have multiple MIDI channels routed through one instance of sign. I'm not going to go through the entire process of building the winds, as I've already done that in my other video. So I'll just demonstrate piccolo for now. For woodwinds, I currently like to split each instrument into three MIDI tracks. I'll group longs together, shorts together, and then trills together. I can use expression maps within Cubase to change articulations, but you could certainly have trills grouped in with longs or even all articulations on one track. You could of course go the opposite route and have every articulation on a separate track. I used to do this. I think over time you just sort of figure out what works best for you personally. In terms of audio routing, I like to separate longs and shorts into their own channels. So I'll hit the plus button here. If I were to complete this instance, do all of the wins here, I'd end up with a long piccolo channel, a short piccolo channel, long and short flute channels, long and short oboes, and so on. I then like to route these piccolo tracks back together, so I'll send them to a piccolo bus. The reason I separate them in the first place is I like to add reverb only to the long articulations. The short articulations have the more natural reverberation from recording in Teldex, 
and I like how that sounds without adding anything else. This is of course dependent on what samples you're using. I'm also going to set my microphone positions how I like them in sign, and I have to remember to route the short articulations to the second stereo output, in this case outputs 3 and 4. The outputs in sign will match up with however many additional outputs I add to this MIDI port by pressing that plus button. Right now I have just two stereo outputs available, but I would have more if adding concert flutes to this MIDI port. Remember you can only have 16 MIDI channels per port, so in this first port I can probably get through all of the flutes with no problem. If you plan on splitting up each articulation into its own MIDI track, then you'll really need to think about how to efficiently use MIDI channels in ports. I have to remember to switch this instance of sign to accept all 16 MIDI channels. Otherwise, only the first MIDI channel will pass through. Okay, so then I have to connect this to Cubase. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'll use a Cubase rack instrument of VE Pro, and then connect to the instance I created, which I labeled Berlin Woodwinds. I make sure to decouple the instance from Cubase, which means that I can close Cubase without closing my VE Pro instance. I also like to label the rack instruments, as eventually I'll have several of these. The audio channel that gets created by default in Cubase will correspond to the first stereo output in VE Pro. I had the piccolo bus set to outputs 1 and 2, so here I'll label this audio channel as piccolo. Then I have to create the MIDI channels. For now, I'll just create the three tracks for the piccolo. I'll label them appropriately and make sure they are routed correctly to the right port and MIDI channel. Okay, so I want to quickly demonstrate setting this same thing up using a different sample player. The Spitfire player isn't multi-timbral, so I thought it would be helpful to show that really quick. I'll make one with the Spitfire Appassionata strings library. The main difference is that I need to create a new plugin instance of their player for every MIDI channel. So when I create the first plugin, it defaults to MIDI port 1, channel 1, with violins 1 loaded. That looks good. Remember, all of the MIDI ports and channels start fresh for every instance of VE Pro, so this is an entirely new set of ports and channels from that Berlin Woodwinds instance. When I create the second violins here, notice that the MIDI channel correctly defaults to 2, so that's what I want. I'll continue to do this for all five sections of the library. You could of course separate articulations, but I'm fine with all of the articulations on one track. I'll route each instrument to its own output, so I'll need to create five stereo outputs in Cubase. I'll do that by activating the additional outputs here. I then need five new MIDI tracks, and I'll label them and route them to the new VE Pro rack instrument. Once you get the hang of how all the routing goes, I think it becomes pretty easy to set things up. All right, so I'll load up my full orchestral tools template, the one that I use for all of my videos, and I'll go through the routing and mixing and show you how it all comes together in a full template. In this template, I have a strings, a woodwinds, a brass, and percussion instance, all of them using orchestral tools samples. I also have a cinematic studio series instance, which I mostly use for the string legatos. In just this first MIDI port within the strings instance, I use almost all 16 MIDI channels, with all of the different articulations that I have in that Berlin Strings library. For each MIDI port or string section, I've created a few different audio channels so that I can apply different EQ or reverb settings. Here you can see I have a send going to an auxiliary bus with a reverb. I found that the Sol Tosto samples needed slightly different EQ settings, so that's the main reason I have them separated. Then here are the section buses, Here's where I combine all of the Violin 1 audio channels into just one stereo output. Same with Violin 2, violas, celli, and basses. Each of those section buses has an output corresponding to the VE Pro rack instrument input in Cubase. Here you can see all of the MIDI tracks in my template. They're all routed to the correct VE Pro instance. And down here are those audio inputs from VE Pro. I don't have any plugins on these audio channels since I've already done all of that in VE Pro. The way I currently have things set up is that all of these audio channels are then routed to a section bus in Cubase. 
The only problem there is if I have multiple strings coming from different instances. So for instance, the Berlin strings coming from one instance and Cinematic Studio strings coming from another instance. I like to route them eventually together in a section bus in Cubase. Then all of those string sections are routed to a string bus where I actually do add a few plugins, like additional EQ, maybe some bus compression, tape saturation, things like that. From there, the strings, winds, brass, and percussion buses are all routed to a mix bus. So the last thing I'll demonstrate is how I like to handle using other libraries for a project other than my main template libraries. For instance, I might want to incorporate the Spitfire Appassionata strings into a project, and there's a really easy way to do that. In VE Pro, go to File, Import Instance from Server Project, and I'll import one of the instances from the server project I started in the beginning of this video. I'll just import the Spitfire Appassionata strings instance. This is a really convenient way to add whatever you need for the specific project or composition that you're working on in the moment. I have a lot of string libraries that aren't really suitable for every project, and I don't always want them loaded up, uh, so this solution has been working for me well. Then I just have to quickly make a new rack instrument in Cubase for this instance and create the MIDI tracks. If I've used the new instruments before, I can even import specific tracks like MIDI tracks from other Cubase projects. So I'll just connect these MIDI tracks that I've created to the right instance. I add the expression maps and I route everything correctly. So I should be able to play these tracks now. As I play Violin 2, you can see all of the routing I've done. The signal starts from the MIDI track, the MIDI is routed to the correct VE Pro instance, the audio returns to Cubase, is then routed to a Violin 2 bus, then to a string bus, then to the mix bus. It sounds complicated maybe, but it allows quite a bit of flexibility in how I do things. One last thing that's very important. When you import an instance from a server project in VE Pro, you have to be very careful about how you save your project. Here's what I mean. Notice at the top of this window, the VE Pro file name is main template March 2022. But when I import a new instance from some other server project, I'll just demonstrate with the Spitfire Passionata library again. Notice that the file name now says VE Pro 7 tutorial which is what I saved that project from the beginning of the video. So if I were to save what I have here, it would write over that tutorial project. I'm not sure why the default is set to do this, but I've accidentally saved over projects before. So make sure that when you import a server project, you click save as right away and save it how you like. Okay, so that should do it for this one. I hope it's been helpful. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and check out my Patreon page for additional content. MIDI files, and even Cubase files, which include this template. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.